Welcome to Strength in Gaming. I'm Samson Lancaster, and today I'm joined with Salvador Madrigal. Hello. Cat McGuire. Hello. And back once again, Subliminality, aka Subly. Welcome back. Hello. <laughs> Monkey looked at me funny when he said that. I know he can't hear you, but it sure looked like he did. <laughs> the timing was like, uh, he's up on my shelf eating. This episode, I have been looking forward to for a while because as uh, we all are a bunch of nerds, uh, especially I, I fancy myself a science nerd. I play really sciencey games. I like lots of sciencey stuff. I love listening to science podcasts and watching science um, shows and things. Um, I like playing with science's butthole. I like <laughs> Oh, it tickles science's balls, apparently, occasionally, according to Sal. Uh, but today, the theme is science. This is the science of gaming. This is a new series brought to you by Strength in Gaming. The science of gaming, brought to you by Strength in Gaming and Sublim Subliminality, because she's our resident scientist. And um, this episode is going to be about Fallout, the Fallout series, the whole IP. We're going to try to cover everything we can um if we can't cover everything we can always do a part two of this one and there's plenty of games that we want to talk about so without further yeah. ado that's a that's i hate when people say that i absolutely hate then why did that. you do it because <laughs> i i had to it just it seemed appropriate um we're going to regret. first <laughs> instant <laughs> regret <laughs> First, we're going to, uh, we don't have any news today. So before we get to the main topic of science, the science of gaming fallout, uh, we're going to talk about what we've been playing lately. Subly, what have you been playing lately? Uh, so Dead by Daylight released their new <laughs> DLC on, uh, yeah, I know, on <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> so I have been playing that lately. Um, it still sucks. Yeah. <laughs> still addictive. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I knew it sucked when I played it. And, and oh, yeah. There's like, a good it's a terrible chance game. that I'll come back at some point and play it again. But yeah. It's been in beta for five years now. Which is, is one of its uh, pluses, I think. That's, I love it's an endearing quality. Been in beta forever. But I've been playing that. And then, of course, playing Phasmophobia with Cat. Whee! You guys together, <laughs> when you're screaming and speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty hilarious. I clipped a bunch of shit. Um, uh, thank you for that, by the way. Was it Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was Wednesday. Wednesday. I was just like, I'm just going to clip. I, I literally like. I'll, no, I Thursday. Was, I wasn't I here was, Wednesday. <laughs> okay. There's, I was playing Eve and, and I had you like in the background. And every time I would hear something crazy happen, I would just switch back over and clip. It. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, that's a good yeah. time. It's fun. It's still scary sometimes, which is nice. Yep. And looks scary. DVD skills actually come in handy in that game. Mm -hmm. I do a yeah. lot of a lot of looping the ghosts around like <laughs> kitchen islands and hallways and stuff. Spin the around the AI. Yeah. Juke. Juke it. Yeah, do the spin around. You don't have dead hard though. You don't have any speed in fucking um Phasmo. No, it's like nope. Blocking yeah, is well, like snail yeah, pace, and like an asthmatic running something. is like slightly faster snail pace. It's old man with a walker. <laughs> old person with a walker is this is running speed. <laughs> Dude with the bum knee. Yeah, yeah. It's just, well, it's that's just part me. of the game. Makes it endearing, kind of. Oh yeah, I love the character models. Like they're so clunky, but it's so yeah, funny. they're ridiculous. Oh, and I I got to see uh, cake shaking uh, during oh, that last yes. stream. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on on Dave's channel. <laughs> Shout out to Dave Dawn of Kills. He was streaming with you guys. It was was it was it just you three or was it somebody else? It was just us three. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, but yeah, he's he's a baby. Rick Astley amuses me. <laughs> <laughs> I know that pisses him off too. <laughs> Oh man! And and now now I'm not gonna live it. Not now he's never gonna live it down because he came onto my stream whilst I was, I think I was playing Valheim with Heather at the time. Um, he came on my stream and said what's up, and then I got a follow, and then I saw it was him, and I was like, what the fuck, dude? What the <laughs> like you haven't been following me the whole time? It's been like over a year, man. <laughs> oh yeah, 
He knew he was in trouble. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. Come on, man. Good man. What about you, Kat? Uh, well, today I just played a whole game on stream. Finished it. Started and finished it. Called uh, The Suicide of Rachel Foster. Like a mystery walking sim game. It was It was pretty good. It was really good. I tried really hard in the beginning to pay attention, which uh, seemed to serve me well because the story made total sense at the end. Um, yeah, it was a little emotional, but nothing I couldn't handle. But yeah, if you like story games, that's a good one. Um, and other than that, I've been playing uh, Elder Scrolls Online because they've been churning out events like crazy. And so I don't want to miss out on those rewards. So I play that a lot with Dave. Um, besides phasmophobia with with just subly or subly and dave sometimes um yeah that's all i've been playing lately i'll have to bring myself to play phasma with you guys again i haven't played it in so long it's so fun you it's should. fun there's a whole bunch of new uh objectives and stuff to do too well that's good because it, i got bored after we played it multiple times because like the same thing over and over again yeah they keep adding stuff and making it harder which is good yeah. So I'll die more. That's that's good. Something to look forward to, I think. Yep. I think I died almost every match last time. <laughs> I was just really... want the dying animation to be scarier. I, I, I well, at first it seemed like it was. Y'all like did not like the way it sounded or something initially. Now you probably don't care, but um, one of the things about Phasmo um, was when you guys were playing was was when you died you just like scream i'm dead i'm dead i'm dead i'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. <laughs> like like scream it out loud so that hopefully someone hears you before you get cut out i guess yeah what, yeah yeah because once you die you can't communicate anymore yeah not not with yeah, anybody can. unless they're dead yeah you can throw shit you can throw books and stuff and lead but, them to places i mean it doesn't it doesn't help when no one's paying attention and also i start trolling people and just start throwing shit everywhere <laughs> Yeah, that's what Dave does. He usually grabs like a knife or something and throws it at us. I was doing that to Sam and Heather when they first put that in. It's like, oh, I think the ghost is in here. It threw a book at me. And you know, that's the problem too, right? How do you know if it's the ghost or if it's you, the other ghost, not the same ghost? Exactly. And if, if you fuck around by just throwing shit when you die, when you actually want to communicate by throwing shit, no one's going to listen to you. So Fuck around and find out. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, the game's interesting. It's definitely a really good concept. What about you, Sal? What have you been playing? Fuck. You don't play video games. Yeah. Like, what the hell is a video game? <laughs> Shut <laughs> I up. Read, <laughs> I read books. <laughs> Wrong with you. So do I. You don't even actually technically read books because you can't. You, you listen to books. No, I listen to books. I know it's the same thing by most Old people's standards, but I've actually been reading a lot lately. I no share that with you How anyway. To properly dismember your your spouse, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Training so manuals, I'm, you know. Gone girl 101. Run, bitch, run. <laughs> I mean, he's gone, not here. Gone girling for dummies. <laughs> yeah, he's been gone for all the last like five or six episodes. So yeah, why why do you think you haven't seen him around lately? Huh? You don't know. <laughs> There's no. Well, it's almost a full moon, right? You're gonna take him out. No, full moon passed actually. Did a few already? days ago. Then I guess he's back in his steamer trunk. <laughs> <laughs> it was March March 28th was the full moon. That's when he was out of the steamer trunk. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta ritualistically shave his back. <laughs> <laughs> or this stuff. So have you actually been playing games, Sal? I know we are. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of games bit. actually. I've been playing a lot of Monster Hunter Rise. Like, oh, uh, the new Monster Hunter. How is it? Good. Now, you're a Monster Hunter fucking fanboy, though, so... I'm Lamarck. Is it better yeah. than World? Yes, it is. How? Um, it's, it's it's pretty much like World, right? Though The mechanics and everything, the... the it has good bones. It's the same <laughs> as World. world has excellent <laughs> controls. It's just the, the... There's no creativity when it comes to weapons and armor, which they have, again, in, in Rise. It's uh, the, the same people that worked on um, generations are is all the ones that worked on on the. Switch I thought you game. said I thought I thought Aww. you I thought you said that the uh, the weapons in Rise looked better than World. They do. That's what I'm saying. But it's the, you just said no creativity. 
in world. Oh, in world, got it. Yeah. There's the the all the weapons were mediocre as fuck. But now um on Rise the the, the weapons look cool. Rise like, is on the Switch? Uh, on the Switch, yeah. It's going to come out on PC in, uh, ne- early next year as well. Nice. Okay. Which I'll probably get it on PC then. Because <laughs> Lamarck. Maybe I'll yeah. wait and get it on PC with you and then we could play. Um, they might allow you to transfer over um, your saves. Mm. Um, I've also been playing uh, Outriders. On, yeah. Isn't... On, um, I saw that. On Microsoft um, Game Pass. I think when I saw it, I was like, isn't this like Monster Hunter? No. It's more like um, uh, Anthem and a a looter shooter. Third person Mm -hmm. looter shooter. um, Gears of War or Gears of War, the way you move around. It's made by people who worked on on, uh, on Gears of War. So the movement's very similar to that. And um, it's fun. I, I don't think it's worth what it 60 bucks it's not worth 60 bucks it's a 40 dollar game oh, wow. um the, the, it's really really simplistic mechanics uh, the graphics aren't you know last gen but um the the game loop and and i'm a i'm a looter shooter or any kind of loot game fucking your looter well. shooter lay mark and any kind of grinding i'm there i used to do korean grinders like religiously so it's ingrained in the DNA by now. <laughs> um, it's a fun game. Once it's forty bucks or less, it's it's worth the buy. Uh, what, unless you have Game Pass, Game Pass you get it you get it for free. Or you have for, game Pass. Um, yeah. So if you have Game Pass, you can play it day one. So that's fun. But um, I'm more I play Monster Hunter. Like I wake up Monster Hunter. That sounds like what me and Eve. <laughs> <laughs> me with ESO lately. Wake up, do my <laughs> daily stuff in ESO. Maybe play longer if I can. Do but... your dailies. Yeah, that yeah. was wow. When I used to play WoW, I was like, dude, I do my dailies. <laughs> Fucking I hated that grind. I grinded to get the Obsidian Drake mount, I think, in WoW. Um, the daily grind for that. I remember that. Yeah, that's basically what ESO is doing right now with these events. It's like you, by participating in the event every day, you get event tickets and you use those mm. tickets to buy um, <clears throat> fragments, um, and the fragments become first a pet, and then you morph that pet with other fragments into a skin, um, and then you have to get the pet again and morph it. Now it's a uh, personality, which means like how your character stands when when they're idle, and you know how they do certain things. That's a personality. Mm. So not everybody standing there looks the same. You know, everybody's got their own personality so um this event you're you're buying fragments for the personality and then in i i think eventually by the end uh you get you can morph into a mount Mm. and then i think the last one is you morph into like a house which i don't understand i'm new to this but that's what they they have houses houses. ever yeah a house (laughs) It's, it's like Baba we're Yaga's sitting... house. It's on. It has chicken feet and it moves around. It's like um, <laughs> I think it's probably it's probably like um, uh, what's it called? Animal Crossing. You know, it's it's a house like that like, that you can decorate and people can. Yeah, visit. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, you, there's many homes you can buy in Elder Scrolls, and you can own all of them at the same time if you want. Yeah, well, that was also the same way in in the Elder Scrolls games, the non online mm-hmm. ones. Yeah, you have houses in different places in Scrim, in the Oblivion, Morrow. Yeah, did they have I only in have Marwin? one house. Yeah, I did. Good. I have one well, house and one in broke. Room. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get good, cat. You need ten houses or whatever the max is. You know what? I, I just know. I'm saving my money. Notice is all the houses you get in the in the, in the Elder Scroll games are former haunted houses. Murders, <laughs> murders occur there. You just get to keep the house after you've completed the quest. Yeah, that that's how I have my big house is that I just did a quest line and they gifted me the house. <laughs> and it was like kind of in disrepair. <laughs> like I had yeah, to clean up all the haunted. rubble. You had to kick out all Many the Many people died there. 
Well, and if I find these like tablets, they open up portals inside my house to make my house bigger. So now one of the portals is open to like this out pretty outdoor terrace, which is kind of cool with a view of like a waterfall. So it's really pretty. I like it. So I don't need so another house right pretty. now. Well, okay, you got you got enough. You're satisfied with the current house that you have. Yeah, I, I want the mount eventually. Of yeah, mounts. Well, mounts are thing. mounts have a advantage to them, right? And also, if you if you don't have one, and if you do, then you have you know either a cooler one or a faster one. That's for Swagorati writes. Yeah, I think the the bro. the MMO culture appreciates cool mounts. Mm-hmm. And yes. I was like, "Where the fuck did you get that one?" And you're like, "Sorry, the event's yeah, over. You can't get it anymore." So <laughs> many mounts in in WoW. Yeah, they're, like they're for flexing, man. I liked the the battlegrounds ones. Yeah, the for flexing. Oh, and 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 my favorite was for the horde. You got the big bear mount after you killed the leader of the allied city. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stormwind. Yeah, I got the the bear for the horde. Those are fun because that that's a flex right there. It's like you, you mm-hmm. roll up on some allies. You're like, I killed your fucking leader, bro. What's up? That yeah. was <laughs> that was a flex when you were sixty. When you were eighty or seventy, it was not a flex anymore. Did the the the, 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 the leaders were garbage? They just roll them. Is the 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 players that you had to worry about then? I don't know. We rolled in with you know, like a raid, so I don't remember I think when it was. Our guild we held we held Stormwind for like six or seven hours the the, the alliance just kept throwing people at us and we kept killing them <laughs> so actually with we got bored eventually there's a little bit of news since i was talking about we we're talking about mmos and i was talking about eso actually even by the time um this episode airs you will have time to play eso for free they're doing an event where you can play for free right now um it isn't always like it. it doesn't always have a free to play option no, it's no. A, you, you no. buy it and you play. It's a buy to You play. buy the base game and you mm-hmm. can play. And then you buy the expansions. Oh, but there's no monthly fee. No. no. Un- you can do that. Uh, I have it. It's ESO Plus, but it's only to get like extra stuff to help you out. Like um, if you want extra bank space or like a crafting bag to put all your crafting materials in, that's endless. So you don't have to worry about storing your crafting at all. There's there's benefits to getting ESO Plus, but you do not have to have it to play. So you just have to buy the base game in order to play. But for for like another week after this uh, episode releases, you'll be able to play for free to try it out without buying cool. the base game. Cool. Uh, Eve is actually 100% free to play, and, and uh, at least at first. Like if you continue, you you, you won't be able to you know, fly bigger ships or get better skills unless you switch to Omega, which is the monthly fee, which is like any other MMO, but it does have an alpha play mode where the game's free to download and you just, I mean, the game is always free to download, but the the pl- gameplay, you can play on an alpha clone, you, your skills train slower and you can't, and you can only max, the skill maxes are lower, but, but that's all I've been playing, by the way, is Eve. And I just wanted to shout out uh, Frozen Fallout, uh, every Wednesday, um, playing with him, and this last time, his wife Jan Nunn uh, played with us too. And shout out to the Doc JT, the Doc. He's the master of all fittings. He's made so many ships for me that kick ass, and nice. I get them blown up all the time. And and he starts complaining. <laughs> He's like, "Did you have like an expiration date on all your ships?" And I was like, "Yeah, well, if you want to blow stuff up, you got to get blown up too. That's how the game works." Um, it happens. Uh, but anyway, I think uh, is that, is that all we, that's all we have. I think for this first half. Yeah. So um, a little when, ketchup. when we come back, we will be talking about the science of gaming Fallout, one of my favorite fucking game series is of all time. Uh, we don't talk about Fallout seventy six anymore. That's how much I love Fallout because Fallout seventy six is garbage. But um, Fallout in general it's just one of the coolest genre the coolest uh universes the one of my favorite things so hopefully subly won't ruin some of the magic to the point where i hate fallout after this <laughs> hey uh, i love fallout and <laughs> i'm a nuclear engineer so you can so, still love it all right so we'll be back after this break with subliminality on the science of gaming fallout
It all started when I had that first shot of vodka. Before I knew it, I woke up soaked in gasoline, lying in a gutter somewhere. I decided to take out my cell and call Andy. The phone rang several times. Someone finally picked up. Hello? It was Kim's voice. But first we have to hear him. Well, which way is Riley's hand? Which way is Riley's hand? Which way is Riley's hand? We don't have the bad words. We don't have the bad words. We don't have the bad words. So Sam. So Sam. So Sam. We don't have the bad words. We don't have the bad words. And we're back. Yay. Yay. And today we have the science of gaming. I feel like we need like some Bill Nye fucking graphics and, and <laughs> intro <laughs> shit for this. You know Bill Nye, the, the science, science of Bill, gaming. Bill, Bill. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want Bill Nye coming after you, dude. That guy's ruthless. <laughs> yeah. I've seen him in person. He's very know. nice. I grew up on on all those shows that and Beekman's World and stuff too, um, Professor but today hates him. <laughs> but today <laughs> we're going to be talking about the science of a video game, and in this case, it's going to be the Fallout series again, uh, a series near and dear to all of our hearts. I think, except for Cats, because she hates it. No, I don't hate. It. I've never played it. God. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Shade. <sighs> Shade is being thrown. Anyway, <laughs> never said I hated it. Fuck you, Samson. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. She hates it so much it doesn't even register on her radar. Yeah. Fuck you, Sal. <laughs> exactly. But today we have Subliminality, who is an actual nuclear scientist, and she is nuclear. going to nuclear. <laughs> it's, it's pronounced nuclear. <laughs> <laughs> how is it supposed to be pronounced actually nuclear nuclear yeah yeah there's only one you yeah <laughs> um but subly today is going to give us a lesson on radiation amongst other things and tell us what is feasible and what isn't feasible in fallout and and explain some of the how the mechanics would relate to actual real science so subly why don't you tell our listeners how you are qualified? Can you quantify your qualifications uh, for this new series, The Science of Gaming? Yeah. So for this one specifically, I am definitely qualified for. Um, I have a bachelor's of science degree in nuclear engineering uh, from an accredited university for a nuclear engineering program. And um, I have been in the field for about eight years now outside of college. Um, I've worked in reactor design, uh, reactor fuel design. I've done um, criticality safety for weapons based manufacturing. And I currently work in radioisotope production. And so radioisotopes are typically used for uh, things like nuclear batteries, which is what uh, powers like the Mars rover. Um, or things like cancer treatments or um, even x-ray devices. All right. So you have a lot of knowledge <laughs> yes. that we do not. Big wrinkly brain. <laughs> big wrinkly brain. Your head does not look as my, big as it should be. My, lid uh, my head is huge, but there's nothing in it. Uh, <laughs> so 
Um, since Fallout is basically all based on like a nuclear war after you know the embracing of nuclear technology everywhere you know in it never fallout changes. war war never changes <laughs> um and it's like everything everything has a nuclear reactor in it um although i don't know if a pit boy does that's something i'm not confirmed but like the might have the, a nuclear battery might have a nuclear battery the 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 um the, all the robots like the mr handys and the assault robots, whatever they're called, those those have nuclear reactors in them, and so do cars. I think <laughs> I think everything runs on something like that. Um, and of course, in Fallout, you have things like ghouls and super mutants and 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 radiation and and, and radiation resistance and all that kind of stuff. So, I think Subly wants to get us started with a lesson in actual radiation in real life, uh, and then and then I think we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, as Samson mentioned, the, the best way that I thought we would start is that I would explain what radiation is. So radiation in the purest sense is just energy given off by a material. Um, and there are two different ways that this radiation can come off. It can either be uh, ionizing radiation or non-ionizing radiation. So everything that we deal with basically in our normal lives has some amount of radiation to it. Uh, most of it is the non-ionizing part. So that's going to be like your cell phones, your light bulbs, your microwaves. Um, and what that means is that the energy coming off of whatever material is giving off that energy is not enough to fully penetrate whatever it's interacting with. Um, so that's how, you know, you don't, you're not going to grow a third arm by standing in front of your microwave. Um, your cell phone um, does not give you brain cancer by using it. It does not deposit anything while it is transmitting through things. Uh, the ionizing radiation is what everybody thinks of as the dangerous stuff, which it can be. Um, that's what comes off of the re like the reactors, um, it's what comes off of bananas, which have potassium in them. Um, it comes off of us because we have potassium in us. Um, it's found everywhere. So that, that would also be like the UV rays that, you know, give you sunburn and eventually can give you skin cancer with too much, uh, exposure to it. That is going to be the radiation that is featured inside of fallout, um, because we are dealing with the nuclear reactors and everything. That is what is actually going to be harmful and, bombs. and can't be, yes, and bombs. Um, I usually don't speak about them because everybody is like, you know, oh my God, that's the only good thing. Or that's the only thing that radiation <laughs> and nuclear is useful for, right? Is just the weapons. But that's not true. I mean, in my day job, that's, I make cancer treatment stuff. Mm. Does that all make sense? Yeah, so far, <clears throat> I okay. think it does. I just want to make sure you guys were following us. Um, so the radiation that you see in Fallout, right, it comes from the environment, from having all of these detonations go on from the nuclear wars, but also the reactors that are literally everywhere in the environment. Um, you have it from you know, the robots and stuff. And you notice like when you go into water and stuff, your little radiation meter comes up. Um, yeah, waters, all waters are radiated and fall out. Yes. Yeah. And I, I saw game. that even, <laughs> um, cause I did, I haven't played any games, but I did a little bit of research on like the timeline of fallout and before the games even take place in like the fifties and the sixties, um, people apparently had like nuclear TVs and appliances in their house. Yeah. So that stuff, like the extreme that they took for including nuclear or whatever into homes, um, would not necessarily be, I guess, possible. Um, 
But around that time frame in, in the 50s and 60s and even into the 70s, they were looking into making uh, reactors that would power trains and airplanes and all kinds of things. Um, Which could feasibly lead to more uses. It could, but I for the things that they had a full reactor for um, would not be feasible. That would be more in like the nuclear battery portion. So I would imagine more of you could have, we have, we do have robots that are operating off of a nuclear battery. They're out in space right now. Um, we also have them, I think they're used for going into like the, um, where Fukushima and Chernobyl happened, they, they do send in robots to come and collect data. I think those are also powered by some type of battery system and it would be a really strong battery like that. Um, but I don't, it would be incredibly difficult to get a full reactor for everything that you need, which would include like a cooling system um, into yeah. like a TV or into a little tiny robot. Because the robots that they have floating around, they're not big, right? They're, no, they're not, they're not big. They're, they're the size really of like a, you know, a medium sized dog. Yeah. Um, you just, you couldn't fit a full reactor in there hell power armor i think has it uses uh reactor cores right um power armor is nuclear powered also yeah i they're power cells right and yeah, so i would imagine like a battery then yeah those were probably more like batteries so like power armor is feasible to an extent so, I, I for getting something battery powered absolutely you could i don't know about if they would put people in it. Um, that's a whole different discussion. But the technology wise, yeah, you you could have Whoa. something like a power armor. So, so that's oh, wow. that's part of it, then, right? So far, you've been saying that nuclear batteries are used in robots and um, uh, things, you know, like the Mars rover and, and things that yeah. that don't um, that don't have humans in them um, yet. But is that is that because well rocket you know the spaceships they have nuclear batteries in them yeah so so then what it, are nuclear batteries safe or safer than a nuclear reactor I would assume or is that a true statement? Um, it defines safe um, uh, so they they're completely different. things um, so like a battery just gives off um they both are heat sources essentially is what they are um the battery is a is made up of specific types of isotopes um a popular one is like promethium Illudium can be used Q32. um plutonium is being used for batteries um and basically what goes on is like the battery generates heat and that heat is converted to energy um but on a small scale uh for a reactor that it's a reactor is going to make way more power and you need a whole lot more components for a reactor you need cooling for it um which typically is a bunch of water lines um though there are molten salt or liquid metal reactors or gas reactors as well but they're all huge. Um, mm -hmm. Even where the nuclear community is designing things that are called small modular reactors, they're still big. Yeah, they're what, 15 feet tall or something for the entire component. Um, you're not going to get a reactor that is going to be, you know, this big that can fit into anything even with trying to deal with any type of nanotechnology or what have you so as far as radiation is concerned because it's a big mechanic in the game yes it is it's a huge mechanic in the game um let's start with something simple in the game a lot of things give off radiation 
Yep. Um, and generally, it's bad for you unless you have some sort of perk or you're taking a drug that that gives you something more powerful that but also radiates you. Um, there are things that happen when you get radiated too much. Namely, you take a lot of damage too, and it can kill you. Um, what, to the extent of it in real life, um, let's say, well, first of all, the places that stay irradiated. So, and I, is that is that the correct term? By the way, I don't know. I just I'm just throwing it out there because I think it's it is. Uh, the correct term would actually be contamination. Contamination. So, contamination is basically when um, we'll we'll say like the ground ground contamination would be the deposit of radioactive material into the ground. Mm -hmm. Now, and and would it be similar, like like what what the stuff that 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 is contaminated? There's like like water is like pretty much all the water I think is contaminated in the game. I don't think, I don't think water, I don't think there's any water that isn't contaminated in fallout unless you find purified water. I wish we had uh, Andrew here because that's like actually what he does is he samples water. Then maybe we should have him on for this uh, <laughs> also <laughs> at some point for a science of gaming. Right. Um, so water would have to go through a purification system to remove any particles that are inside of it that are radioactive. Um, so would would walking in contaminated water actually hurt you or um, contaminate you, I guess? Yes. Okay. Same way with uh, interacting with the ground, if the ground was contaminated. And there's different ways that that would hurt you too. It all depends on what is causing the contamination what is the source um so depending on the emitter off of whatever it is so radiation um happens from things called alpha beta or gamma and neutron irradiation and all of those have different effects and um different um ways to combat um alpha radiation so alpha particles are very big that's helium is essentially what an alpha particle is um since they are so big it cannot penetrate your skin so the only way it would damage you is if you breathe it in so mm. if the contaminant on the ground was an alpha emitter you would have to kick up dust and inhale the dust for it to cause you any damage. Um, Cause while your skin is strong enough to block an alpha emitter, your internal organs are not. Um, but if it is a beta or gamma or neutron emitter, then just physically being around it, it could cause you trouble. So um, that's probably more what we're dealing with in the game fallout then. Right. You're typically dealing with, um, and primarily it's going to be the gamma is what you're dealing with in fallout based off of what, um, weapons are made out of and the nuclear reactors are made out of, um, you are going to get some neutron obviously, but the gamma is going to be what causes the most damage. That is the most damaging type of radiation that you can deal with. So that is what's going to be, you know, just immediately coming off the ground from, um, the fallout from the weapons and all of the reactors that had, you know, a nuclear explosion go off. They, they, you know, exacerbate the spreading, you know, of all of the radiation and thus contaminating everything. So it sounds so far that the contamination contaminated areas in the game seem pretty realistic, at least. That yes. Part of it. Yeah. I would say that they're pretty realistic. Um, What about um, the effects? I think I think there are some superhuman effects at some point in the game, uh, but you're also like taking damage or something. I, f I forget. It's been a while since I played a Fallout game. Um, there, but you can mutate. You can have mutations that cause different perks. Yeah, like I'm. I'm curious to know like how. Uh... 
how accurate mutations are not necessarily superhuman mutations but just mutations in general if so, you're exposed to contamination like that so um it that is where everything starts to you know diverge from the truth um mm -hmm. you will not become a mutant because you are around radiation um you're not going to grow a third arm or a third eye um or a third nut sack. Right. <laughs> third nut sack. Just, um, you know. you, you're not going to alter yourself in that way. In any way, it's going to be more damaging to you, the exposure. Um, so what happens when you are exposed to um, radiation in a damaging way? Obviously, people get cancer treatments that are radiation therapy. And those are a completely different type of topic and discussion. But if you are saying just around something that is radioactive um, and you expose yourself to this, it'll depend on your exposure rate and um, what you're wearing, how long you were there, all kinds of different variables. But you will, you'll start to get different stages of um, radiation sickness, um, and it can devolve into eventually your death, depending on the dose that you get. Um, so we all get a dose of radiation every single day. You know, the the world around us is radioactive. Um, we aren't growing third arms. We aren't you know, having children with eight legs born. Um, but you do see things like cancer happen. So what's happening there is um, when it is from a radiation exposure, um, the particles that are getting irradiated off of whatever material is causing the radiation are... Um, interacting with the cells and prematurely splitting them as they are regenerating. So the cells in our body are constantly dying and regenerating themselves um, everywhere. Every part of your body has like replaced itself multiple times at this point. Seven yes. Years. Seven and years, so you're a new person. <laughs> when that is happening and you are exposed to um, radiation, um, this, it's not guaranteed, obviously, but um, what happens is, you know, the, the cells split prematurely or um, something happens to the little DNA strand, you know, it gets broken. And so when it is regenerating itself, it, it makes a mistake. Mm -hmm. And those mistakes are, you know, they, they grow, right? Um, and so that's where you get like, you know, cancer it can be like a lump or something, you know, um, tumors and everything. Um, it's, it's a cell mutation, essentially. Yeah, it, cancer it's is, a right? cell mutation, right. Um, but it's not like a, a mutation in what like the Simpsons portray is like, right. you know, yeah. the fish Three with four eyes. Eye. Yeah. Right. Eyes, whatever. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's like you said, it's just a mistake. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that, that is what happens um and so that's where fallout kind of diverges a little bit um and when when you are in the environments in fallout unless you have that perk that you know gives you health instead of taking damage um that is relatively accurate um not the health perk yeah not the the, the health perk is <laughs> I was like, like no that that cat, cats look, cats that's look not regenerate broken bones. You said you could regenerate from radiation. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to be able to like regenerate yourself from that. <laughs> yeah, but right. you know, taking damage like that, that is what happens. You are right. damaging the cells in your body. Um, and radiation sickness kind of shows itself in many different ways. Um, you can, people will start um getting like rashes on their skin um they you, you do get sick like you are poisoned essentially 
and um, there you can become depending on if you have like a a huge exposure um, say like you are within a weapon going off or um, there there were experiments back in I think it was the 50s and 40s um, where they were playing around with um, some plutonium balls and um, they I play with my plutonium balls every day yeah um, essentially uh. <laughs> a a huge burst of radiation went off and um, when that happened the the person who was exposed you know while he was in the hospital you know his his body is essentially dying and what happened was his skin was basically like melting off of him Whoa. so that is was, where you uh, get like was, the ghoul like look. Was breaking the bonds right or the bonds of the atoms mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It started breaking them and he started liquefying because of it. Well, his his skin essentially was like it wasn't like liquefying, it was like peeling off of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like essentially uh, is it's kind of like a like uh, molting. Very yeah, bad like, yeah, it's like you're molting. Yeah, it's like a really, really bad sunburn. Um <sighs> and so that's kind of what like the ghouls look like in Fallout, right? You know, they're mm-hmm. they've they've got bones exposed, their their skin looks like it's worse than a third degree. Yeah, they essentially Burn. look like undead. They look like zombies yeah, they or whatever, but yet they're fully functional. Right. And so that also would not be possible to have in real life. Because when you reach that state um, of, if you had enough of a radiation exposure to be in that state, you are dying. There is no, yeah, dead. well, you'll be dead very soon um there is yeah the ghouls walk around like they're just yeah another race. there is nothing that can be done to save you at that point except for making you comfortable and even then like Oof. everything you touch your skin is gonna all, come all off the of. ghouls and fallout would just be in depressive palliative care <laughs> that don't be yeah <laughs> and they would last maybe like a month yeah I, they could yeah. prolong like it skin- your skin's supposed to protect you from the environment. So things, th- this would not, things. you would be so exposed, even if you could walk to around. anything, you know, not yeah. just radiation, but right. You know, whatever Everything. is in here. The yeah. air. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When your cat jumps on you, when they step on your kidney, they'll actually be stepping on your mm-hmm. kidney. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> But yeah, the, I mean, ghoul, ghouls seem like one of the more far-fetched things in the game. I wasn't too surprised. Actually, before the show, you basically said, yeah, ghouls aren't possible. Um, but I did expect you to explain why they weren't possible. And now I think it makes sense. But there are some other things that deal with radiation um, in Fallout, aside from the weapons. And that's Rad X and Rad Away. Now, I want to preface this with, I feel like, I at, at one point thought that Rad Away was definitely more feasible than Rad X. Um, but because Rad, Rad X is a pill that gives you radiation resistance, whereas Rad Away helps flush it out of your system. Um, and actually, I think it does. I think Rad Away, I think both of them cause some side effects in the game um, for a while, but they keep you from dying and they, they, get, they make the radiation go away. Um, so rad, rad X and rad away, how feasible, how realistic are, are, are these things? Um, so I would say partially true. Um, I imagine rad X and rad away both being some type of potassium iodine substance um which is something that um would be given to people within a fallout zone um after some nuclear detonation or a um like a reactor um meltdown um so when three mile island happened um they gave 
um, everybody potassium iodide within the area. And no. all that does is protect your thyroid um, mm. from the radiation. It is the most sensitive organ to um, even just acute radiation. Um, but it does nothing else. Um, it, it does not prevent you from, you know, if you breathe something in, you're not going to now not have lung cancer. Um, it only protects your thyroid. Is there nothing then that helps it helps radiation contamination in a human go away faster, or is it just over time? Um, there are things that they do, um, and I am not a health physicist, so I, I can't recall everything off the top of my head other than I know of the potassium iodide that they give, you know, both in prevention, but that is something that they would give somebody that comes in to a hospital after having radiation exposure, you know, mm -hmm. a huge radiation exposure um, is that would be something that they do. Um, they would mostly try to flush out the system in general after a radiation exposure. Um, but Radex is not, not going to be, you know, the end all be all one, you know, pop a magic pill and all of a sudden you're, you know, invincible Amused to radiation. radiation. Um, there, there really is no a hundred percent immunity to a radiation which i don't think they're actually just to to point out the mechanics of the game i don't think there actually is ever a hundred percent immunity unless you're inside of um uh what's it called lead lined power armor and have taken rad x and i think even then you're still getting small trickles of it when you're going into a really heavily yeah it gives you, it gives you one tick instead of uh, like yeah. 30 or 40. so yeah and that would be realistic because um, that is multiple layers of protection there. Yeah. Um, and why that is realistic is the different types of radiation emitters. So the alpha, beta, gamma, and neutron, they all have different um, things that will shield you from them. Hmm. So as I mentioned, the alpha can be shielded from your skin. Um, so if you are going into an alpha contaminated area, you would just need to wear a respirator so that you do not breathe it in. And what, what, what if you had exposed like a, uh, a wound or something? Yeah, you would need to like wrap that. You probably should not go into an environment if you have a wound in general. Um, yeah, well, I mean, it's fallout. You're getting wounded constantly. In the right, so just... yeah. <laughs> but there's, so... no, there's no mechanic for, for that though in the game. Like... <laughs> Yeah. But gammas, that's what, that's essentially what an x-ray is. An x-ray mm -hmm. is a gamma ray. Um, and we get x-rays all the time, right? When you go to the dentist, they put this little lead vest on you that protects your vital organs. Um, lead is what shields gammas. Yeah. Which in, I think it's in fallout four specifically, you can give different paint jobs. I think to, um, some are, some are, no, I think they all had effects. And then the one you could just do, you could do lead paint or whatever, like a, a lead coating on the armor that, and then that made it, it gave it like a, a really high radiation resistance. Lead paint was not well, nearly it's enough, not, but I, yes. I, wouldn't I think it's a coating. I don't know. I don't think it's the necessarily just paint. Like, I don't remember because it, it was, the game was so customizable. Um, and it, it was the appearance of like a skin, you know, like in a game, yeah. it looked different, but um, it was like this, the, the lead, whatever gave you an 25% or whatever per, um, <clears throat> for radiation resistance. Um, but speaking of radiation resistance, uh, one of the, the biggest things that the entire game is based around. So, so far, I think we've been kind of like, I mean, ghouls, you know, that's a creative license. We want some undead type creatures, you know. Myth busted. It's a little fantastical, <laughs> yeah. but it's not. It, it's it's it's. They wouldn't be walking around and being normal people. Oh, I beg to differ. That's Congress. <laughs> <laughs> but um, vaults, the biggest thing, all the vault dwellers. So all, all of the um, so the people that on the surface, 
basically, I think, became ghouls um, or just died. Um, I think there was also there's also super mutants, but that's that that was that was actually supposed to be like genetic. They're genetically engineered, like in the first game. They're created. They're not just they're not just exposed or whatever. But we we can talk about super mutants later, maybe. But vaults and vault dwellers are basically like you know the rich, the extremely intelligent, everybody that was able to afford or have a reason to be able to get on the list to get into a vault. Are and and because you usually you normally play a vault dweller, right? Um, and and you're you know the the processing the water the water filtration system or something in your vault breaks and they send you out to go fix it and that's how most of the games start um how feasible is a vault for um surviving a fallout uh, um, nuclear winter? so that would be um depending on how they're designed uh that would be fairly feasible um People had bomb shelters um, that were all underground. Um, it would all depend, though, um, on what is going on. So, like, if it if it's just a reactor meltdown, you know, easy peasy lemon squeezy, you know, you just yeah. go hide out underground. Um, weapons is where it gets a little more dicey because um, if you detonate the weapon real close to the ground, it's just going to destroy everything. You know, for a certain you know, depth underneath the ground. Um, so yeah, that's and, where and some of the vaults did not survive. Like you do find vaults that are destroyed and obviously they didn't survive the war. So um, I would assume that the vaults that are left over were ones that did not receive any direct hits from. Any right. And so that device. would not be like a radiation thing. That would more just be like an explosives thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, cause like I said, you, you fall, you come across ruins where the, the doors are just knocked down and, and like half of like a mountain is gone or whatever. Like those that, 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 that's clearly, you know, damage from a nuclear bomb. Um, and, and so, but so then if a vault, cause it, my understanding of the vaults and I think they might too also have nuclear reactors in them um, because, you know, they're, they're actually a big structure, like, you know, live where people live, but they also had, um, you know, water filtration systems and, and um, obviously large amounts of food supplies and, and air filtration and stuff like that would have to be a thing, right. That it'd have to, because y you, if you were breathing in um, contaminated air that, um, from the surface, then it would. That's what happened on the night of the comet. I don't know if you've seen that movie. <laughs> no, That's Chakotay from uh, Chakotay. Voyager. Star Trek Voyager. Um, they, they got exposed to the whatever was in the air with the comet flew over. <laughs> then the comet so, flew over. So I have a question. Yeah. Megaflora and fauna, is that like a thing? Considering we're Chernobyl. Um, and Fukushima, for that matter, there's a lot of irradiated uh, animals and they don't seem to be, um, they've been kind of coming out deformed, but they haven't gotten like larger or like the giant roaches or the giant mole rats. Oh, yeah. Rad roaches and, and mole rats and fucking rad scorpions. Yeah. Right. So that stuff is the rad roaches. Yeah. The where those are huge. Right. Uh, yeah, those they're are like, they're like this big. Yeah, like those chihuahua. are like small dog size. Um, that stuff is not feasible. Um, but a, something deformed, absolutely, because that goes into the mistake part, right? right? Um, yeah, something grows differently over right. time. And then rad scorpions are like the size of Lily. Yes. <laughs> um, and if, okay, I have a, pertaining to that. So if... Right. If a nuclear event happens, like, you know, Chernobyl, and then the animals in the area become irradiated and survive and reproduce, it's their offspring that have the mistakes, right? The potential for the mistakes. Potential, yeah. Yes. Because yeah. Their, their cells don't form it, correctly. Right. And it, it all depends, too, on, like, when the offspring are born, um, in utero, they would, and the event happened, you are much more likely at that point to, to have a mistake happen because while, um, 
it, the uh, animal is, you know, gestating inside of the the mother animal. Um, the cells of an infant or you know a child animal like that, they are rapidly being, you know, made and developed and changing. Um, right. So, so it be, could be more potential for mistakes at an early development. Right. And so at that point, you're you're looking at more like a leg might be missing Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, you might split a foot in half, but you're not going to like grow extra feet. You might just the foot might just, you know, become split off because the bones, you know, had a mistake growing there. Um, But you're not looking at like oh, now it's going to be a completely different animal or completely different looking thing. And with an animal, that's typically not going to survive. So um, when a mistake, you know, that large happens with animals, um, you know, animals follow more of a a survival of the fittest unless, you know, they're a pet or something. Right. Um, Exactly. In the wild, that nothing's going to take care of them if they can't keep up with the herd. They're done. Right. If they are disabled, then they are basically food for something else. So it won't last long if anything like that happens. Right. It's factored out. It's not like people where you know if your child is born you know without a leg, you know you're going to go through extreme lengths to adapt you know this child to the world. Prosthetics. Yeah. Prosthetics. You can. You can. um, there's there's accommodations there's there's you know there's uh ada compliance there's so many things um in society that we you know we tend to take care of stealing other people's limbs yeah <laughs> stealing yeah. other people's limbs Trans- Trans- transplant Trans- yeah Trans- <laughs> things um uh but uh yeah so no, no large animals. That's not a thing. No, no oversized roaches or, or rats or, uh, well, the mole rats actually, I feel like the mole rats are more feasible than anything else. Cause they just look like ugly hairless, like moles or whatever. They're well, kind of big. Huge fucking no, that's true. They can get big. They can get big. That's true. Um, and I guess they're like a mole rat. Uh, that would be more like a crossbreed thing too. Yeah. It seems like, but them, you know, growing to extreme sizes because they were irradiated, you know, that's, we don't have hulks growing around. Um, You know, from my career, I have been in radiation environments and I'm I'm still stuck at five foot three. So (laughs) you've never never Hulk smashed. You're tiny. I'm sorry. I am tiny. <laughs> we're we're all huge, so that's that's weird. <laughs> if we had there, there's a name for it. Like if if we actually what? had gigantic rats, it wouldn't be because of radiation. It would be because that, that's a, that's a, it'd be a New hereditary. York rat. No, 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 no. There's <laughs> there's there's a name for it. I don't remember the name, but it's like it's like usually when a genetic mistake happens. Well, giganticism is an actual thing. I know, uh, but I'm, that's name, not what it? I'm talking about. <laughs> okay yeah sam um okay there's when a genetic mistake happens usually it's for it's not for the creature's benefit but there are rare times when a genetic mutation happens that is actually for the creature's benefit it's very very rare but it can happen and then if that happens enough times that's just that can be bred that's just dudes with big dicks (laughs) So if we ever had gigantic rats, it would just be because we happen to have a ton of gigantic rats with a genetic mutation. We do have gigantic rats. As (laughs) Sal pointed out, there are gigantic rats already. They exist in like New York and and like Africa. There's this South African pouch rat. Yeah, they're massive, but but they're not. They're still not like boss mole rat size. (laughs) Because those are like and they're not that way because. Uh, a weapon, a nuclear weapon went off no, it's, and, it's, you know, right. irradiated it's them. Evolution and, and evolution yeah, it's just, and other things. yeah, it's, it's, it's not some crack. growth ray. And, yeah. And, and yeah, and I don't think, I, I don't think fallout takes place a really long time after. Like, it's not like generations no. and yeah, generations. 76 was 80 years after. Th- we don't talk yeah. about 76 out. Fuck 76. And then, well, if you're going to go continuity, you have to include that. Crap. No, 
No, it's not Kaylee. I like want to go get my my like, biology like notes right in, now to see way. what that name was. <laughs> just because people in, um group in the the prequels of Star Wars, we have to put in that crap. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, I think the Fallout Three takes place like 150 to 200 years after. Oh, it does. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that far. That that, like that is that years. is that is pretty long, but I still don't think it's enough time to turn to create more rats and turn them into the size of a no, car. No, the acceleration is, is crazy fast, like bacteria level of yeah. mutation. Yeah. And then yeah. there or are we things can, we can hope. Yeah. There are things like uh mm. super mutants, which were created, I think, in a lab in the very first game. And then um I, I remember how the story goes there it's basically they're created and then for like war like super soldiers never then, changes but yeah war war never changes I mean, you guys gotta keep saying it um mm -hmm. and then they they later on basically you know they're 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 people too right so they have emotions and feelings and 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 they they break off and become their own like uh race and tribe or whatever uh, and but super mutants are basically like hulks. I mean, I, I don't. Yeah, they're, 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 they're born. As... They're born with resistances to um, disease yeah. and radiation. radiation. And they're really strong, superhuman. Like not, I, I would not say they're actually as strong as Marvel's the Hulk, because that's like ridiculously strong. Like, but these guys could, you know, they could probably yeah, throw they a car at big you. Ham hammers of rebar, big hammers. Um, but. Uh, how, what are your thoughts on on that, Subly, on super mutants? Um, so first off, that would be a huge ethical dilemma, right? Um, right. <laughs> yeah. As I inhale scotch. Genetically modifying humans. Um, yes, but these were these were bad people that wanted to create an army of super uh, mutants to take over the world. So, we're, we're no ethics. They, they got away with it. I mean. So ethics aside, obviously there's ethical problems with that. <clears throat> um, this is getting more into like biology and anatomy. Mm. Um, so that is a little outside of my realm, but to an extent, maybe partially true. I wouldn't so like say like the, like um, my favorite companion in New Vegas is Lily um yeah <laughs> <laughs> she, she's just a character um yeah. someone like lily is probably not possible um but we've cloned a sheep so yeah um, uh, can you explain lily to cat and her oh. listeners <laughs> <laughs> um lily is a super mutant in the game um and so uh there is a mechanic for companions, um, similar to like having a pet, you know, in ESO. Mm -hmm. um, and you they, get they to bring fight for you. Yes, um, and you can have all different types of companions. You can have a basic companion dog of a meat. dog. Yeah, no, dog meat. He's not basic. Dog meat is amazing. I love dog meat. <laughs> <laughs> dog meat has also made me pull my hair out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop running into my grenades. God damn it. Yep. Yeah. Running into a minefield. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one's great. Um, uh, or setting off laser traps. Um, oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, so you can have companions with you, uh, usually up to two companions at a time. Uh, dog meat. So they, uh, there's dog meat, which is like this dog cyborg dog. Um, you've got... In the later games, yeah, he becomes a cyborg. Yeah. Um, there's EDE. He's a little robot. Um, you... There's people, companions that you can have too. Um, yeah. An android. Yeah, you can have oh. an android. Um, and Lily in New Vegas um, is a super mutant. And Lily is like this heartwarming grandmother type personality, but she looks like the Hulk. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> He's a grandma Hulk. Yeah. And like her smile is like, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but i love her though she wears this yeah. little hat and little dress it's just she's adorable 
Um, yeah. and, and she, she says, will the, smash things. <laughs> she, yes. Yeah. Lily, Lily, she, smashed. Lily smashed. Uh, <laughs> um, Lily is probably not. My dog is confused because that's her name. Yeah, she's like, Why <laughs> she keeps looking at me like, yes, mom, but mom, mom, oh. Um, she's practically the same size. <laughs> my God, I know. It feels like it. She can about knock me over. Yeah. Um, I miss having a big dog. <laughs> having oh, dog yeah. Something like Lily is probably not feasible. Oh, the Russians, the Russians almost achieved that during the... Um, I mean, through, through like breeding and training and stuff, you can probably get something Steroids. big and strong, but still not superhuman, right? Because they know, are. We're getting, we're getting pretty close to being able to genetically weed out deficiencies in 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 children in utero and shit like that with oh, CRISPR yeah, but that, and all that other shit. Now you're, you know, this isn't Gattaca, Sal. Calm down. <laughs> Be careful. Ethical dilemmas. Oh, that's right. In Gattaca, they <laughs> remember Gattaca. And Samson, uh, I did want to comment again on the vaults since you brought yeah. that up. Um, being something feasible for having um, like a reactor in full, you know, full blown, you know, city almost. Um, yeah, basically, we have, underground city. yeah, underground city. Um, we basically have that with um, submarines. Um, yeah, the, the U.S. submarines and, and quite a few other um, countries have nuclear also, powered submarines. Umbrella uh, Corporation. <laughs> they, <laughs> they have a huge underground city. And so, you, I don't know about you know, 150 years of um, yeah it would have living to be under sustainable. there. Sustainable, like how how would they synthesize food and stuff like that? Um, right. Yeah, because submarines have to come up. I, I don't know, maybe three, six months or so to get Soiling, food and everything. Smelling green. Um, Smelling green. Well, so, no, that's big, uh, hydroponics. You could grow. You or could like, grow, in, like in. You a could have a farm piercer. underground with hydroponics. In, in Snowpiercer, the, the, the lower oh, class. Piercer. They eat well, um, protein bars that are made out of insects. If if that's yeah. true, though, if because because I know you, I, I mean because I know you can grow plants indoors with you know with the proper lighting and, and water and nutrients could you then also like raise livestock uh sure you so, would need to i don't think that stuff was i don't not, i don't think not like a big animal game, but... cows eat a lot it yeah, would probably well, be difficult to house you know like also, a farm of cows or something also the um, rabbit the chickens maybe i don't think they they didn't ha I, I don't know i don't remember like how big they were but i feel like there were less than 100 people but yeah, I the vaults. The vaults were small. That. Yeah, they, yeah. they weren't the, that, that big. Was the so capacity was a hundred people. <clears throat> yeah. So, whatever you would need to serve for a hundred people to survive for you know one hundred and fifty years or whatever, um, I don't know if it's in the game per se because it doesn't go that deep. But um, it does sound like yeah, the length of time would be questionable. But yeah, um, and, and, and something like that is yes, absolutely feasible. Um, and, you're and gonna miss out on things, you know, with sunlight and. Um, and yeah, now we're getting into prep territory. D supplements. Let me crack my prepper. <laughs> there's a there's a system you can build that um, basically recycles water and and. Yeah. Uh, and you need still still suits <laughs> or what is it? Water world. Um, you know, you just recycle your pee. You know, one of one of Vince's uh, friends, I forgot his name. Recycles his pee. No, he had a he had a system set up. He's like a prepper, you know, conspiracy I mean, guy. He grows plants on top, and then there's like a rocks, and then I think it's sand and carbon, and then the water that comes out at the bottom is clean for the fish at the bottom. Mm. But, but the fish, when they poop in there, it cycles it up towards <coughs> the, the plants again, so it's feeding the plants while it's oh, it feeds the, water. the fish feed the plants. Yeah. <laughs> As I choke on water. Um, it's nice that plants need things that we don't like. Poop. A lot of the things plants Fish want food. are things we don't like. <laughs> Speak for yourself, so cat. <laughs> Some people do like poop. Oh, yeah. We get rid of, of it because like we don't want it. <laughs> We it's as a waste. people, as a whole, as, as, as everybody. Well, I mean, I can't speak for Your body here. expels waste because it can't be in there for too long. And the toddlers will still try to eat it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, I, I bet you I still have a chewing gum I ate when I was like in kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> so 
<laughs> also, yeah, I found out in there. With, with that cell thing that I was trying to say before about beneficial mutation, I I looked it up and I remember like why I thought about that. Um, I am one class away from getting a degree in biology, so I don't have a degree in biology. You don't have to listen to me, but <laughs> I have some finish that class some cat and then you can do the next under episode. my belt. <laughs> um, but I, I learned in cell molecular biology that there are beneficial mutations. Sometimes they're considered a double edged sword. Um, and other times it works out totally beneficially. For example, um, there's a evolutionary change in hemoglobin, um, called HBS and that makes our red blood cells the sickle shaped as in sickle cell anemia with one copy of that you have resistance to malaria but if you have two copies of that you have sickle cell anemia so it's like it's crazy how stuff like that works and then there's another variant called HBC um, where one copy gives you like 29 percent ish uh, resistance to malaria, but two copies gives you 93% immunity to malaria and at worst causes uh, mild anemia rather than sickle cell anemia with that variant. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, isn't isn't that crazy how how mutations work? Like it could one little tiny mutation could either be your downfall by having sickle cell anemia or be your benefit by being almost completely immune to something crazy like malaria that's cool that's what i was thinking of when i was trying to figure out what the name of this was it's really just beneficial mutation but i thought there was a name for it hmm. yeah i think i remember actually <laughs> remember <clears throat> learning about that on that uh a show that i listened to called ologies mm. um, and those things can happen popular. without radiation exposure like exactly. cells make mistakes yeah. all yeah. the time yeah, and and that's why I was saying that if just we had like huge rats, it's not because that. of radiation. yeah, it can accelerate it or exacerbate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or it can trigger a mistake that might not have happened, and so then you know it spirals out of control. Um, yeah, it's crazy, crazy shit. So that's kind of how the cancer treatments work. Is um, you know they they target it on a uh, tumor and um you know make mistakes in the tumor cells growing that eventually kill it mm -hmm. death claws and then afterwards you have cytotoxic um pp <laughs> <laughs> uh, death death claws are another thing that are pretty prominent in the game if you've ever played um fallout a death claw yeah, the claws are bitches, dude. The it's sort of like are the ones that are the real. The casadors are no, you can deal with them. Giant, too. fucking hornet, mosquito <laughs> things that kill you in like. A it depends on the game too, Sal. Like in Fallout Four, once you have um the Minuteman's what whatever what's that? What's the the rail gun? The fucking mm -hmm. um the the named rail gun. Like you can just blap a mother death claw, but. Mm -hmm. In like, I think it was three death claws were a force to be reckoned with. And, um, but they were created, apparently engineered before the uh, Great War by the US government as a cheap replacement for human troops in combat operations. It says that they were derived from mixed animal stock, pro primarily the popular Jackson's chameleon. I'm, I'm reading from, the, I don't know why I did this before, but I'm reading from a Wikipedia or a, a fandom wiki. I'm trying to figure out where the fucking chameleon comes into play with. I don't know. Uh, oh no, that's right. Some of them can be invisible. Yeah, they cloak themselves. They can cloak. That's right. Um, which, which in in certain ways is possible. I mean, if 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 the thing is just brown, you and it, it's and it's on a brown background, you won't see it. Um, but I'll, I think to the level in the game, I think they're complete. They're kind of like predators. Party. They have like the predator cloaking, I think. But yeah, um, yeah. I think I, I haven't played Fallout in a long time, but I, I think I remember yeah, it's been a like while. a vague silhouette. And then you have to kind of guess where the head's at so you can snipe it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's right there. Monkey, you're walking across my keyboard, dude. Oh, monkey. But um, 
yeah, I, I would assume death closet is more of a biological thing, but right, uh, that would fall under like um the same thing as the super mutants, right? Yeah. Most likely not possible. It sounds like and... they were created before all of this even happened. Yeah, so those were all genetic experiments. Actually, yeah, here's here's the. There's a there's a summary that I should have read first. It says, "Death Claw is a term referring to the genetically engineered creatures developed by the United States military to replace humans during close combat search and destroy missions." The Jacksons chameleon was used as the basis. They escaped into the wild in the aftermath of the Great War, and over the next few decades, colonized much of the former United States, becoming apex predators in many of the new post-war ecosystems. It's like this, the killer bees all over again. They make all this shit. <laughs> they get out. But um, what about um, like lasers and plasma weapons and stuff like that? We have those already. Well, we have we have lasers for sure. But I mean, can do you? Can, I don't think we have a, a handheld laser as effective as something from Fallout. But I could be wrong. That's because Energizer and the battery companies are keeping or suppressing technology <laughs> to advance batteries. To be more efficient. Well, it sounds like we could use a nuclear uh, nuclear battery to uh, uh, to power a, la- uh, a handheld laser. It could be any type of power source. Um, from what I understand with lasers, um, lasers have to be continuous. Um, so... That's where you get into like the the Star Wars, you know, laser guns where it's just like, you know, one little laser bullet. Like, yeah, like, (laughs) no, that, no, there's no physics does not compute with Eve, um, on the other hand, the lasers are real. So, um, obviously, we do have lasers. Um, yeah, I I had laser eye surgery a year ago. Same, Um, except I did it. God. did it no, hurt? you don't feel anything. No, you don't feel anything. But you it, know what they do it, is they, they, they pump you, you full of they yeah, it they, freaks you no, out. They pump you full of Xanax and shit, so they, oh, they don't you don't yeah. care. <laughs> you don't give a shit. And they say stare into the dots oh. or whatever, and then it's done. Before like, you okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was more like claustrophobia than anything. But, yeah, which I, again, yeah, no if, pain. You, if you're hopped up on Xanax, you barely even care. Yeah, it's honestly not the pain with stuff like that for me. It's it's how it fucks with my head do you, do you want to know how it's done because i can explain it no no <laughs> i think but i it's know awesome and i just don't want to start saying the words because then i'll get physically nauseous but oh, anyway i want to say it though continue <laughs> my dude my husband got his blood drawn the other day and he lifted up his sleeve so i could see the uh, the cotton pad on it <laughs> how are you <laughs> getting a biology blood? degree cat <laughs> Um, because I thought I wanted to work with animals, but I didn't get a bio degree. I got uh, six other degrees, but not bio. <laughs> yeah. One of animals, them is medical technology. Go figure. But <laughs> <laughs> medical technology, you can't handle a cotton swab. I know. I didn't yeah. mean to get it. It just happened. <laughs> <laughs> I was Sorry, going Honor, for bio, I and I got six more. Got a... Well, it's just a lot of a lot of degrees overlap. So the the classes that I was taking for biology happen to coincide with classes you would need for like medical technology. And so at the end of the thing, when they're like, okay, here are the degrees you can get. There were six of them. So I was like, give me all of them. Why not? <laughs> I earned them. <laughs> yeah. For, for lasers, it depends on the application and what you're trying to do. Um, if you're, isn't a laser gun like it would just be a continuous beam you couldn't have like bullets with it um yeah absolutely and you know it something to the extent of like a death star that would not be possible or achievable well but... if if, if real <laughs> genius has dismay. taught me anything is chemical lasers work great for making popcorn explode <laughs> <laughs> But it, it all depends on the application for lasers um, and plasma weapons. I really don't know much of anything about plasma material, but um, to me, that seems fictional. 
probably I I would say improbable for a plasma weapon. I'm trying to find something oh. here. I'm trying to remember. The, oh, the Fat Man. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Oh, yeah, the, the mini. <laughs> In Fallout 3, the Fat the Man nuke. was basically a rocket launcher that fired a mini nuke. <laughs> um, I, well, Fat Man was one of the nuclear weapons dropped on um, Japan. So it's a play on that. Um, with Fat Man and Little Boy. I didn't know that. But yeah, this one's supposed to be a mini. How feasible is basically a rocket-sized nuclear uh, rocket launcher? I mean, would it even go far enough to be safe for the user? <laughs> Could it even go far enough? Um, sure, depends. Um, and you can make a nuclear weapon the whatever the size deal, you want, right? but it depends on what you're trying to go for. Um. Obviously, they fit weapons on submarines, so they can't be ginormous. But for, you know, like a little, you know, firework launcher, I don't know about that. I don't know how effective <laughs> that would be either. Well, I think the, the bombs themselves are like maybe. Yeah, the, the, they were seven, like this eight big. Eight inches I think. round. It was, it, was a, it was a big bomb that it went boom and it flew like <laughs> 10 yards and then blew up. And devastated. Um, I mean, sure you could have that, but you'd be awfully close to like. The... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you take you take some rad damage when you um when you. Yeah, I think you thumb. do get rad. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> would. <laughs> you would likely still be toast if <laughs> you had one of those. You so you that, would need something more like automated if like. Or know, that can robotic. shoot really far. Or maybe 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 it's like a drone. Like it fires a drone that flies. You know. <laughs> half a mile that way <laughs> before it explodes or something um but yeah i mean fallout what what about the transformation of the landscape like I, and i think i think this is already kind of true because it, it's we've seen similar things happen before in real life but i mean nature eventually grows back after um after a, a fallout and win nuclear winter, right? Like it's not permanently dead unless it, it just, it's like for the, the, I would assume that it's just the length of the contamination of the strong contamination of how long it stays. Right. Yeah. It depends on like what was deposited. Um, so there are some very long lived um, contaminants um, but those typically aren't the super dangerous ones. Those are fairly stable, you know, relatively speaking, contaminants. Um, the ones that are highly dangerous are going to be the ones that are considered unstable. So those are the ones that are, you know, when you walk through them, those are going to be what are giving you rad damage um, is the unstable ones. And so they, they would have a relatively short half-life, anywhere from seconds to a few years you know we we would consider a few years to be short uh, speaking of that, that half-life could you explain that short. to our listeners what what is the definition or what does half-life mean yeah so half-life is essentially the amount of time that it takes for a material to uh basically be reduced by half i love that i i know this subject very well <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you don't have to explain to me. I know. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it is a physical constant. Uh, it's something that you can measure. Um, and it is known on. Um, it is known. Yes. It is known. <laughs> <laughs> um, I even teach uh, kids about Half-Life by doing um, an M&M experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can put M&Ms in a cup. You can count how many you have and dump your cup out and take away all the ones that have an M on them facing up. So M&Ms have like, you know, the little M imprint mm -hmm. on mm. one side. So right. you take away the ones that are facing, <clears throat> the M is facing up and you can calculate the half-life of M&Ms because eventually they will 
it will be to where you have no M&Ms left. Because um, of the probability that <clears throat> two sides is 50%, one has an M and one doesn't. So when they fall out, they uh, half of them are up and half of them are down. Yep. It's a uh, half life is an important tool uh, for scientists to measure. Um, I know that in geology, it's really important for uh, dating rocks because um, they carbon check the dating. half. Yes, carbon dating. Um, they check the half life of um, so it it doesn't always have to be carbon. Um, it could be other um, elements. Sorry, I'm trying to think of the right terminology. Sometimes I get like elements, atoms, molecules, you know, all the scientific terms. I'm just trying to make sure I, uh, <laughs> I'm i using the right term. Um, and depending on w what is in there and, and how much of it is left, they can calculate uh, how old that rock is. Um, because if if so much of it has decayed... They can say, okay, we, we know the half-life of this, of car, let's say it's carbon. Like we know the half-life of carbon. If there's only this much carbon left inside this rock, that means um, it's, it's uh, however many years old. Because they have that measurement to go by. <laughs> I'm not great at explaining things. That's why I'm not going to be a teacher. <laughs> but, you know. Does anybody else have any questions or, or things they want to bring up about the fallout? You wanted to ask about vats, right? Yeah. Um, so vats, let me, let me, I didn't pull something up for that. Let me, let me pull that up really quick because it will be important for people to, it's called uh, vats or a vault tech assisted targeting system. And for those that have played the game, it evolved from freezing time and allowing you to uh, target different parts of the bodies of your enemies with your weapons. Um, and then, and, and I think used action, an action point system. So like depending on your character's dexterity, agility or whatever, um, you had a certain amount of act, uh, action points, whatever perks you had. Um, and then later on, it evolved into more of like a slowing of time, doing the same thing, mind you. But um, if you sat there trying to decide for too long, you could still get um, smashed by a super mutant or whatever. But yeah, that's. So my my thoughts or understanding is that perhaps there could be technology that would help you be more accurate in doing things like targeting with, um, you know, visual aids and maybe ocular implants or something like that. I have that. one of those, but I have one of those this, um, on my, on my monitor. I can turn it on. It's a little crosshair that comes out right in the middle. Oh, that, that's, that's how people cheat with the Huntress Dick, <laughs> the crosshair <laughs> in the middle of the monitor. <laughs> it's built into the monitor. Yeah. It's people. That's how people cheat with the Huntress. Um, but in, if you go strictly by how the game is played, there has to be some sort of quantum element, right? Because time is either freezing or slowing down. Well, I think um, it was it was to make the game um, easier to play. Right? Yeah, I understand. That, it's a game mechanic. The slow down one, I, I feel more like it's more of a, a chemical way of doing something, right? Like it pumps you full of adrenaline to where it seems like shit's moving slow because your mind's going faster. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so or, for VATS, I would say like obviously you can't actually freeze or slow down time. Um, but you probably could get some type of weapon system that has maybe an artificial intelligence system inside of it and has maybe some, um, I would guess like quantum computing. So it would be incredibly quick time. Smart um, gun. Yeah. Like a it's smart something gun, that interfaces with you so that in your mind, you're like, I'm going to go for the arm and the head. You just go, like in your right but i i think you would have to actually like program it to mm -hmm. be able to do that like i don't think you would be able to you know directly interact with it that way i think you would just you know be like a essentially holding it and pointing it at something and it would then have to scan the environment 
this is where the artificial intelligence aspect yeah. would come in, right? It would have to scan the environment and make a decision for you on what to aim at and then fire it off for you. So you, you would basically be holding like a smart automatic weapon is essentially yeah, and, what and, you would and, do. And but there would is, be no like, you know, you can slow time, you know, yeah. like you're in the matrix. And, and see what the, the percentage fifth of hitting things is. has taught me anything, it's called the replay system. And wherever you put the first bullet, all the other bullets are going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that 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 is actually quite feasible, right? If, if the first well, bullet they, has they some have, tracking they have smart, in it. Yeah, they have smart bullets that will curve around buildings and shit. Those are pretty it, cool. You would just have to, you know, seek out the first one, right? Or or be painted with a laser or something, a target painter. But, um, yeah, I mean... I think that 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 covers a pretty good chunk of uh, Fallout, the science of Fallout. And I got to say, I'm perhaps more impressed with the fact that there's a lot more things that were, I guess, more realistic than I thought. Um, I, I feel like there would have been, you know, some things would have been a lot less realistic. Uh, but uh, it if there's anything in the show that we missed or if there's just something you want explained in further detail, you, the listeners, you know, just uh, contact us. You, you can you, hit us up at the, the listeners <laughs> info <laughs> at strcast.com or just search strength in gaming. You can find us strength in gaming on any uh, social media platform. And, you know, we'll, we'll answer anything there. Uh, you know, if you have questions. And we'll, you might we'll get post. an actual answer. You might get bullshit. Yeah. Well, if we get enough, <laughs> maybe we'll nice. even have, we'll have a, a section where we, you know, do yeah, like part two. questions or something or have a part two of this episode. Um, and you guys should let us know what other games you want us to have uh, a science-based discussion on. Yeah, exactly. So like, for example, we already, uh, I think Kat already has one game in mind, at least. I do. <laughs> what would that be, Kat? Um, I really would like to discuss Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, That's a good one. Because I, f- I feel like it's it's uh, in the realm of a lot of it might be feasible. Of course, there's going to be some things that are not. But it's rooted, I think, in reality enough. Um, it's not too fantastical. Um but yeah, uh, Subly has not played that game, so we will probably won't do that right away if we do that. Yeah, well, I, I, I would really like to do Eve because it's all about space, and I know for a fact that space. a lot of it is based <laughs> in actual science. Um, Apparently, and in it's fact, the final frontier. And in fact, they they have some some things in the game that interface with actual scientists to help research, um, not necessarily. Um, space in general but at one point there they had uh you know some something where you could you you'd help them identify different slides of things and i don't know it was interesting um but bro the they were just is, making they were just minting fucking uh cryptocurrency by your <laughs> they were just making they were making people crypt it was, de- a, it was all a smoke crypt- screen cryptocurrency uh but uh yeah eve eve is a is one that i'd want to do at some point um there were, I think there was another one that we said. Cat, was there something else that we said? Uh, Bioshock. Bioshock, yes, you said Bioshock. That could be a fun one. Um, because, because there's, there's a lot plasmids, of stuff to deal with there. Plasmids, um, underwater city, uh, underwater city, all a kinds floating of stuff, city, <laughs> which probably uses a nuclear reactor. Uh, I don't remember the game. I didn't play. Do one on Redneck Rampage. <laughs> but I mean, there are plenty also... of games. Go ahead. If if there are any video games that are like heavily geological based, uh, well, any anything anything that has a semblance of reality. So the basically, world is Carmen San Diego, sci-fi or just just not like straight fantasy. I think would, yeah. wouldn't make sense because we couldn't do an episode on ESO. Everything's based in magic. Well, okay, and but I'm trying to say that if if there's a game out there that's that's geologic based, we have a resident geologist. My husband. 
we could because, figure that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because this episode them. was, was great because Subli is a nuclear engineer. Like... So she was very um, qualified to speak on this, you know? Yeah. And I also have a degree in geology, but it's an associate. So I don't. <laughs> No, <laughs> so my takeaway from all this is all basalt. radiation is bad for you. That's all I know is basalt. No, <laughs> yeah, so basalt is a thing. Not all of it is bad basalt. for you. <laughs> I know. Keep eating bananas; they're good for you. Don't get the sun because the UV rays are going to kill you. <laughs> but it'll give you wrinkles faster. Live in a that's vault. For sure. <laughs> Just live in a vault. Yeah, the sun, uh, don't breathe the I air teenager, because so. of radiation from Fukushima in the air. Just hold your breath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But do um, eat radioactive boar from Fukushima <laughs> because it tastes better <laughs> and it gives you superpowers. Um, yeah, I, I think we all actually learned something during this episode, and I hope our listeners oh, did absolutely. too. Absolutely, yep. yes. Um, Gamma radiation is not going to give you the Hulk powers, it's, no. No. <laughs> it's gonna kill always you. ask questions, everybody. Always ask yes. questions. There's there is a there, there's a saying on that show that I kept talking about ologies it's ologies, ask yeah. smart people stupid questions um like you know do it because yeah. how else are you going to find out um and and don't be afraid of sounding the science stupid. of gaming i know it sounds silly because we're playing video games and people are like you know whatever but if you think about the kind of technology that we have now that was science fiction you know 10 20 years ago is fucking utterly ridiculous you look at you look at shows like Star Trek and you talk about communicators and small handheld computers and all that kind of stuff. It's right here. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. more powerful than a yeah. fucking tricorder at this point. Yep. <laughs> like, this is more can, powerful you, than some of the you shit. You can that literally was on attach Star Trek. lenses to your phones that'll <clears throat> diagnose people. Oh, there was a, there's also a new a new app called Lens. I think it's just called Google Lens. Um, and you can take it, it's like it's own it's it's sort of like a advanced reverse image search it just attaches to your your um camera and when you take a picture of something it brings up a bunch of information and searches and other images that are similar to whatever it is you took a picture of so like if you're trying to identify a flower or something it will it's crazy that's really um, cool <clears throat> it's yeah, crazy. It was like 20 years ago yeah that was you know in yeah, some science get, fiction movie get... No, yeah, and, 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 the, and if you wanted that answer, you needed flowers. to look it up in a, a really big book that had maybe a, an illustration of it. <laughs> and you yeah, had you had to, to take it. a picture of it with a camera that had film, you know, go get the film <laughs> developed, you know, and take it to a library and search through, you know, 8 million encyclopedias to try to hope you find the right flower that you and were also, looking for. Plants have plants can look very similar and uh, two different plants could have the, the tiniest little difference. Yeah, and, and one the, is poisonous. The difference of yeah, <laughs> eating eating one that's poisoned <laughs> versus one will get you one high and one will give you yeah. Mu- dude, diarrhea. shrooms are the things that are the scariest to me because we eat we eat mushrooms all the time and and I'm mm. always like when I eat mushrooms I'm always like yeah what if uh, you know Somebody they fucked up, up and someone that's put a death cap in there I don't know <laughs> also berries too yeah, yeah there's berry. lots of poisonous berries out mm. there. Tomatoes like for burning. a long time were were not eaten because they're part of the nightshade family. Oh, <laughs> turnips. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> she, Damn. She said tomatoes. Tomatoes. <laughs> tomatoes. Turnips tomatoes. are as well. So are the um, God, they're like white carrots or something like that. Parsnips. Parsnips. Is it parsnips? Could be just fucking nightshade root. <laughs> well, that's what a, par- a parsnip looks looks like a carrot, but it's like white um but anyways <laughs> the science of gaming the first episode fallout with subliminality and th- i think this was awesome and we're definitely going to do it again we're going to do more sh- uh shows on science of gaming and uh we welcome your suggestions again look us up online strengthengaming.com you'll find everything and also uh, Subly, did you have something that you wanted to plug for this particular episode? Yeah. So um, in case anybody wanted to learn more about uh, nuclear science and engineering, uh, you can check out the American Nuclear Society. Their website will be listed in the description of the YouTube video that gets loaded up. 
and on the uh, audio. So if you're listening to this on uh, whatever your podcasting app is, there will also be in the description a link to the the Nuclear Society. You said, yeah. The American Nuclear Society. The American Nuclear Society. Nuclear. <laughs> Uh, I'm in danger danger. encourage (laughs) encourage your kids to become scientists your daughters especially because I know like now women in STEM or at least at least like Kat said ask questions you know encourage encourage asking questions I know I mean what's the typical stereotypical kid that he just keeps asking they just keep asking so many questions the parents get pissed off and just like why? Because <laughs> I said so. <laughs> but you I know, regret ask that I was not a kid that asked questions. I just took everything at face value, and I hate that I was like that. Now that I'm older, and I have all these questions now, so we're here with answers to ask questions. My answer like, to everything is four. Yeah, and if you have any specific questions for Subly, uh pertaining to her field or 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 fallout yeah just let us know um but yeah thank you again for being on the show absolutely and it's and thank you all for listening everybody in the u.s and in india and other various countries that are out there sprinkled through there's like one person in like every country that like listens i think so it's <laughs> but the same mostly in the united states and, and <laughs> india Thank you all very much for listening. Thank you for listening. And good night, you motherfucking nerds. Good night, guys. Good night. Science, bitch. He never actually says that, by the way. (laughs) That's just like the meme. (laughs) But it's great. Science, bitch. (laughs) Because you can hear it it in Jesse's voice. Dude, uh, the way he says bitch is amazing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What's up, bitch? What's up, bitch? <laughs> Thank you so much to all the nerds that listened. You can find us at strengthengaming.com or email us at info at strcast.com. 